Hey guys, we'll start here just in a moment. a post soon regarding not today but soon this week making a post regarding to my audience that we've been that i've been working on uh, stream here and kind of just making like a first draft like just introducing what i'm um, when it comes to the audio uh, sorry i should call it the inventory audio system that i've been kind of working on um Kind of, I kind of been plotting today. I kind of is writing out how I want the intro to go. I think I want it to be very similar to the video that I've made in the past, or like any of my other technical projects that I've worked on. So that's what we kind of be doing. But so we'll be working with working on a lot of apps and applications today. Um, mainly, just I'm just working on the intro. So just introducing the video, introducing all that stuff. And then I think later on we might, I might um, take a listen to some of the highlights of the Tone Butter, um, Tone Benders podcast. Um, if you don't know, this is the podcast that inspired me to make this audio inventory system, uh, inventory audio system. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I said the title right. Um, so we'll be, we'll be kind of listening to that and picking out parts that were that stood out to me. Um, and yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. Hope everyone's doing well. Pretty excited to kind of get starting, starting to plan to share something about this system. This now this will be only this is the first iteration of this project. With that being so, with that being said, still, so just realize that there's some things that are that I definitely am going to improve upon, and that's actually what we'll I'll kind of go over too in this intro. Well, actually. That section of the video, I think I'll save until the, the latter part, just because that's something that um, I'll be working towards in the next update of this project, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I'm going to just dive into this here. I'm going to determine where to start at first here. I think the best thing might be just to record. Uh, and I, I, I hope this doesn't happen, but I will be recording with OBS. So if I in the stream by accident know that I'll probably go right back up live in a couple of like minutes or whatever, it shouldn't happen. But just in case it does, just know that's why. Okay, so here's where we're gonna get started with first here. I'm gonna just record a couple of like random like um, video of my project. Um. I kind of already have like a simple clip that I can use just to show the basic gameplay of it. Um, to the, there you go. Um, yeah, so I already have like a like a basic like little video. I haven't trimmed it out or anything like that yet. So, but pretty much it's just like a little. I'm gonna do like the same kind of format I did earlier, with um I said earlier, but like um I guess the last was it the beginning of January when I did my Unreal. Meta sounds the kind of video. I kind of introduced myself. I said like, "Hello, my name is Darius Verdine," and "Hello, my name." Actually, I could just I could just play it right here now, honestly, just so I can hear it myself too. Miss Darius, and this is my Unreal Five demo featuring Lyra. I think for the intro on this, I think I wanted to like do like something like, "Hello, my name is Darius," and this is. And this is my um, Unreal 5 and MetaSounds, you know, um, inventory audio system or something like that, or whatever. 
and then right into gameplay. I think that might be the, the way I want to introduce it. We'll still see that. I'm, I'm still writing that out, but I think, yeah. I do write things out by hand, so I apologize. Just hold up. I could use, I could use Notion, actually. Sorry about that. Okay, actually, maybe I should just use Notion. Just so I'm not writing out super slow. Although I love writing things out in this situation. I think since we're streaming here, it might be just good just to kind of get this. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we're gonna do like a. Now, with this being said, because I am using Notion, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I don't really have a template yet for this. Um, so, uh, we'll just leave the time alone there. But I do know I like to use the to-do the to -do list toggles. I'm going to just do like a bolded and, and underline introduction. And introduction. I can do bullets maybe, or maybe I should just do. Let's do toggle lines. Oh, that's what I should have did first. Hold up, we'll, we'll change this. We'll do we'll do toggle lines. How about that? And then we'll do a to do. Better three is fine. Introduction, perfect. And then to do. This is just like um. Do another toggle, heading three, and we'll do um, opener or something like that. Sorry. We'll do that. Opener. Opener. Yeah, so I was gonna say hello. My name is Darius. And I'm a three audio, audio system. I think let's get the opener like pretty simple at that. And then the next section that I did have are written down here was I labeled it for YouTube. I'm going to label like inspiration, inspiration and task list for projects. This section is exactly what it's titled as. It's going to be explaining, you know, the inspiration and then going to exactly how I executed the project. I think we'll do inspiration like later but task list wise this is kind of exact this is what it, this is kind of the basic things i had written down i'm going to make these um to-do lists just to kind of make sure I, I incorporate them i'm 
So the first one, the first task that we started with here was really how to uh, how to equip an, an item onto the player. So that was like my first big task that I had to do: equipped item slash. We I want to put slash weapon. Um, the player. I'm just going to write out like exactly what the tasks are and then underneath it, I want to include like this script that I should say, maybe I'll, I'll highlight it like a, like a different color just so I know. But pretty much the first task when I started this project was literally how to equip the weapon or item to the player. Um, and honestly, for the, all the sakes of being honest, I really didn't worry about the item part until, and actually, really the item part is not even finished yet when it comes down to it. Um, but I really, I mainly focused on the weapon because originally I just wanted to focus on the weapons and how I could add fully to the proper weapons that were equipped by the player. Um, but of course, as I started to develop the system, it started kind of, the possibilities started to be like, okay, well, what if I, the player adds armor. What if the player picks up an item? What if the player picks up a, like a, a flashlight or a lantern or whatever? You know, so that, that that's kind of what it expanded to. Um, but for showcase purposes, for this rendition of this project, um, I, the question originally was, how can I equip the weapon to the player? Um, and what and what kind of system can I build off of that? Um, the second one was now, okay, we needed to create a system that can help identify which weapon was picked up, picked up and equipped by slash on the player. And that, and that was a whole journey itself there. Jeez. It, it's kind of, when I, I was just writing this, I kind of realized how far I've came from this because there's a, like, honestly, these tasks that I'm writing down are pretty big. And I realized that like some of the stuff took like month, like a whole like month or two to figure out. Not so much this, this one right here, particularly that took about a whole like month or two. And of, of course I was, um, you know, away for like a whole month as well. But still, that took a good like month or two for that for me to figure that out, and also collaborating and asking other people for assistance with that, and kind of getting some feedback regarding how I could do it better or how I could do it a little bit. Yeah. So, and actually, maybe I want to mention that real quick. And that um, the star mentioned the actually and same thing with this. Let's actually go back even further. Let's go back to the quick weapon real quick. Um, so the quick weapon task list, I'm going to mention, I'm just going to start, mention the first iteration, iteration of the equipped weapon system. And why we changed changed it I didn't mean to make it all um, bold but oh you know what I forgot yeah um, I can't do that well then that's I can keep it italics that's fine um so the reason why I want to mention that first iteration of the equipped weapon system is I first equipped equipped the weapons I if I actually take a look, I'm going to take a look at the old I have, I have the old project opened up here so I can see exactly how I did it before if I'm not mistaken the way that I did it before compared to the new version is this so the so this is all the same I press E uh, the character I make the character say whenever I press the E key 
I look for the, the overlapping actors. The actors in the situation would be the um, the the weapon children, which is like the axe, the spear, the um, hammer, blueprint in the in the in the session, and then I'm, I it, it checks for an interface on that particular weapon if it is true, and and if it meets the condition of an equipped weapon, and then we just pick it up, and then it does a print string. That was the original way that we did it. Um, I believe compared to the the new system that I have here, I believe it's similar, but not quite the same. We can just like look real quick here. Right, okay, so I, I already see the difference here. The biggest, Nope, never mind. I'm sorry. I was right. Never mind. It's the same. Yeah, so I did the equipped E on here. It's looking for the overlapping actor. It looks for interface. The biggest difference, though, is that I sent it right to the interact function. Um, and the reason why I did this is that the interact function allows us to say, see, when, when we were here, it, it's, it's, a, it's a similar thing, but I added a gameplay tag in it. And ooh, that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get into that too. Um, what I was trying to do originally with the gameplay tags is originally I was gonna try to use the tags to identify which weapon was being picked, which weapon was being selected by the player, um, and it it did work. Um, we we were able to use the tags, and it was able to tell us exactly what weapon it was because it was tagged. Um, the problem with it was though is that I needed a way to use those tags to now say, trigger that sound for that particular weapon that the player is holding. And that's where we bump into some trouble. Um, I guess I'm getting a little too too deep into that, that that's a whole other section of the video. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much why I ended up not using um, gameplay tags. So I guess that that's why I probably should explain. The biggest difference between my first iteration and the second iteration of my equipped weapon system is that I was trying to use gameplay tags to identify what the weapon was. Um, and that actually goes into <laughs> the section below. So I'm gonna do it real quick here. Hold one second here. So. And I believe I used, what did I use instead of the gameplay tags? I just used a variable, right? So instead of trying to make it use a gameplay tag to identify what the weapon was, I just literally made a, a parent um, weapon base and I gave it a variable to say, hey, um, what, is, what is that weapon that they're holding on to? And depending on what the pickup sound is and fully sound is, it'll tell you exactly what, 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 what weapon it is in the system. So if I picked up an, uh, uh, um, an ax here, I, have a, I literally have a, its own variable saying, this is an ax collision. This is a stat, an ax um, static mesh. And because you picked up that particular variable, it's going to play the fully sound for the ax fully and the pickup sound for the ax. So yeah. That'll be hard to, <laughs> that, I explained it like that easily now, but now typing out the script's gonna be interesting. But um, uh, biggest change I made for the system is replacing gameplay tags with variables. Yeah, sound, okay, sound-based variables. So technically, we're just using sound-based variables to trigger right now what it is, so. Let me 
variables. Uh, sound base of inclusion variables. That's so. So right now. So the biggest thing that we changed from the equipped weapon is not really too much. I believe the only thing that we really changed from that system is where the interact went at. So let me let me get this. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get this together. Okay, so so the biggest thing that we changed from the equipped weapon system, if I'm not mistaken, actually, is with this. Uh, originally, yeah, okay, so. Originally, when I equipped the weapon, and it went it went to the inter interact interface, it would then send the pickup weapon um, node all the way to the weapon itself. So now, when I picked up the weapon, it would ask if the weapon is valid and all this stuff, and that's how I would pick it up per se. The issue became, though, when it came to targeting where the camera should follow, when I picked up the weapon, the, pro the issue became this. Because I was saying the target was myself, the self in this situation is the blueprint weapon base or whatever weapon was actually on that player so the camera was literally following the weapon around it was not following the player it was following the weapon so and i don't even know if I, can i still play this just so i can show you yeah i, I think i can kind of show it, it, it does it fine on the axe and everything but some of the other weapons it was having some issues with it and I, of course it's not going to do it on stream but originally, that's why I started over. Um, it was following, the, the camera was following the actual weapon and not the player itself. Um, and of course, we messed around with the target location rules and everything on these um, set actor location rotation nodes and um, detach from actor nodes as well. But it just was, it was, it kept targeting because because if you look at here, it says it's valid detach from actor there's a set actor location and rotation well it's like well what's the location um, rotation target default scene route was a default scene route it's the weapon whatever weapon was on it so there was really no way of getting around that i don't know how it's working now but it's, <laughs> but but it is we're just gonna pretend like like it's it's supposed to be messing up but um either way though i ended up also restarting this project just to kind of clear up some of the gameplay tag stuff that I was messing with as well. So um, let me write that down real quick in nodes. Um, so I guess I, uh, I first set the, the equipped weapon system Uh, uh, let's say actually event pickup weapon. Um, so I, I first set the equipped pickup weapon logic on the the parent weapon parent blueprint base instead of the. Sorry, I go back over here real quick and see where I set that at too. Right. Okay. So here we go. So I, I, and the equipped weapon, um, interface or function that I created actually went back to the 
third person character. So, which makes sense. Now that, now that I think about it, you know, and of course, after going through all that, so I said the equipped weapon, pick up a weapon. Uh, I'm, spelling this all, I'm spelling this all wrong here, sorry. Weapon logic on the uh, parent. Sorry, first set the equipped weapon logic on the blueprint, parent blueprint base instead. Let's, let's make sure I make it say this right. I first set the equipped weapon pickup, the equipped pickup weapon logic on the parent blue instead of the blueprint third person character actor by placing the equipped weapon equipped weapon function function on the by placing the equip weapon function on the third person person character I was able to equip the weapon to the proper target. That's that's right. That's exactly why we did it. Um, because I was able to uh, I was able to equip the weapon on the proper target, and the camera. Now again, some of this stuff will probably be modified as I develop this better to work better. Um, of course, because of the biggest downside of this right now is I can't say, hey, what if I add, what if I equipped another weapon on top of me? Right now I cannot do that because right now it's always gonna detach the original weapon from the player and then replace it with the one that I, uh, the equipped weapon I selected. Oh, and I, I, that's also another point. Um, this system also makes sure that the equipped weapon goes back into place, where I, where I, or pretty much, it's always going to make sure it replaces the original weapon where where, where it was. So, um, that's fine. We'll, we'll, I think we can mention that maybe. I think I'll keep this for now because that was the biggest issue. Really, it was like every time I would equip the weapon, an original rendition of this project, it would start to follow the weapon around. And some, and even sometimes it would like literally make, make the camera go where the item I detached it from, you know, it, w it was replacing with the original weapon. It would literally just swap places, but then the camera would watch the weapon on the ground. It was like it was like really weird. Um, yeah. Um, let me just. I'm just gonna grab this. I grab this sentence and copy and paste it. Just because this is gonna go for every little thing before that. Okay, so then the biggest, so then going back to the biggest changes, create the system that I can identify which weapon was picked up and equipped by on the player. Biggest change I made for this system is replacing gameplay tags, sound base. Biggest change I made for this system is replacing gameplay tags with um, sound base inclusion variables to identify. Now, the biggest flaw of this particular system right here is, of course, that technically, technically, the game in the system does not really know what weapon I picked up. It, it only knows it based off of the sound that I set it to. And you only know because of the sound that I set it to as well. Um, but when it comes to actually the system saying, yep, that's an ax, the only the biggest way that we're able to identify that really is by the collision. So, yeah. Mm, 
I think I, I hold up. I think I'm actually downplaying what I did because technically, actually, it does know exactly what it is, right? Because in this iteration of my project, the final first rendition of my project, I'm using the components of the sound base for Foley and pickup sounds to identify which weapon is being picked up. So it knows what weapon is being picked up because it says, hey, what's that Foley sound that you need? Oh, you're using the meta sounds axe Foley? Oh, so that's the axe you're picking up then because only the axe has that um, collision component and Foley sound variable linked to it. So yeah, never mind. That, that, that's exactly, I, it, it knows what it's talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I do this sometimes in myself where I downplay what I did. It, I, it, it knows what it's talking about. Um, here we go. Uh, one second. I'm picky about this stuff. Okay. Cool. All right. So then the next system that I wrote down here was, um, after I made a system to identify which item or weapon it, the player picked up, I focused on a system to call the fully animation notify and say, okay, because the player is holding this weapon, this is the sound that you're going to play. So what I wrote down here was a system to call fully, call the fully animation notify. I think it's exactly the name that I did for that. There you go. Okay. So, um, yeah, the next system I created was a system to call the uh, Foley animation notifies and trigger the corresponding sound Foley to based off the weapons set Foley. Foley sound base variable. second here. Okay. Um, the biggest thing I changed from the original one on this one, there's quite a bit on this one. Because this is where actually I got stuck at, um, if I be honest. This is uh, this is actually the eventual reason why we decided to just abandon this project and restart with something else. Um, if I can find it, I can show you exactly why. And may, I, th I believe it mainly had something to do with, yeah, this here. So... Of course, yeah, so I, I had the general right idea when I first started this with the animation notifies and the fully um, notifies. You know, I pretty much said, okay, with the animation, you know, notify, you know, footsteps. I, you know, first thing first, I had to make sure I made the footsteps first, right? Um, but then I needed to also include the fully um, notifies as well but I wanted to use the same system to 
trigger both of those, right? Um, because um, so right now I use the lane trace, you know, by channel to trigger the animation, notify footsteps, and then I'll play the sounds. And of course, depending on which, oh, actually, no, that, that is actually the biggest change. The biggest change that I tried to do was I said, okay, well, let's use the gameplay tags to identify which one is which. And this is where I got lost <laughs> because trying to use line traces to trigger or to hit the weapon that was equipped on my back to, to play this certain sound was tough. It was just not working. It wasn't consistent, of course. Um, line traces in, in, in general for anything besides footsteps are pretty inconsistent. So that's why I ended up not using line tracing for the foley. Or, or at least the way that I think, the least, the least the way that you think I did. If we go to now the updated node for the Mr. I guess the character Manning, but if they're a person character, you can see that actually I created two separate, um, two separate event nodes. One for animation footsteps, one for animation notify fully weapons. That way that they both worked separately but you know, of course, it's still on the same animation track. So now both of these little systems are separate from each other, which is good because the fully of the fully of the footsteps will not, ex at least for me, were not exactly aligned. I did not want them to be exactly aligned with the footsteps. I wanted to be a little more natural. I wanted to, you know, sound like it's actually a person, you know, walking with the weapon on their back. Um, that the weapon is not going to always play when. You take your first step because it's swinging and it might be swaying it may have got caught on something so yeah that's why I did that um, so we kept the line tracing for the footsteps and I actually was able to also use um, a selector to say okay well whenever I come across XYZ you know cobblestone snow or well one of these are going to be dirt eventually it's going to switch automatically to that proper surface depending on what material is set to and what meta sound it calls for that's a basic footstep system there with that but with the fully weapon system here what i had to do here is i had this i had to cast the animation notify to the blueprint character we go back to the blueprint character it would cast it to this here and it would it would say hey you know, we, we want to know what exactly what's valid here. If we, if we, uh, what's valid here? The uh, input object that we're looking for is the equipped weapon, and of course, we're looking as of the third person character from the target. We're looking for the equipped weapon that's on that target for the blue person for the blue, the blueprint third person character. I know it's a mouthful. I'm trying. I'm trying to slow down. Um, so once we figure out what that equipped weapon is that is on the third person character blueprint. We say okay is it a valid weapon it is perfect it is there's really no option for it it is not valid because if i can't pick it up and if it's not a valid equipped weapon well first of all if i, if I can pick it up and it's a equipped weapon i'm lying to myself if that makes sense it has to have to be able to be able to equip it so but as long as i can equip it it's going to say yep that's valid and the sound that it's going to play for that fully animation notify is whatever the fully sound is targeted to on, which is the equipped weapon, on that uh, blueprint third person character. So pretty much any time that I pick up a weapon, it's gonna look for the target, the, the it's gonna look for the equipped weapon, the right fully sound to play for that equipped weapon, and then it's also gonna make sure it's on that third, that blueprint third person character actor. And then of course the attached component is the match of the, the blueprint, the blueprint third person character actor. Yeah, so that that's the biggest thing that changed. I guess the summarize um, created or separated the Foley and footstep animation notify notify system. It made it way more simpler. It made it more. It, made, it just made more sense, and. Ironically, with this particular part, I was so close to being correct about what I had to do. The hardest part was this logic right here, as I fumbled and stumbled to try to explain it. 
because <laughs> because pretty much you, you have to cast that you know fully weapon animation notify to the character the character in this case is going to be the um, blueprint third person you know character um and, and reach out to that variable character which is the mesh at the blueprint the blueprint third person carrier right perfect okay and then as the as the blueprint third person carrier we want to figure out the target but we also want to figure out the equipped weapon it has we're going to stop right there go back to the is valid is valid is also saying hey is does he have an equipped weapon and is it targeted on the blue person the, the blueprint third person character if so perfect great we're going to play that fully sound from the equipped weapon that the target which is the blue person the blueprint third person has so anytime i pick up a weapon pretty much it says great you picked up a weapon i'm going to figure out what that fully sound is on that equipped weapon the equipped weapon is the variable that is found on here, which is the fully sound. The equipped weapon is what's determined by this system here. Anytime that we interact and press E on the character, it says interact, congrats. It's gonna interact with it. And then it's gonna say, hey, here, you know, we're gonna cast this back to the uh, blueprint third person character. And we're gonna tell you that this is the pickup sound. And then it's gonna say, great, awesome, perfect. Well, this is the equipped weapon and it's valid. If there's a if there's an existing equipped weapon on the back of this character, we're going to rotate it and switch it out and detach that actor. And we're gonna put that actor on the on the location where the original weapon was at. We're gonna equip the weapon here on the mesh, specifically on the stock the socket name weapon back. And then we're gonna print a string that says, it's on my back. So yeah, there you go. That is not the end, but that's actually not the final system that I need to write about here. The next one I need to write about is the meta sound system. This system here, this is gonna be the final one, and then we're gonna jump into the, the inspiration list. And I'm gonna like we're gonna we're gonna like kind of skim over the um, podcast a little bit so I can um, point out the. But, specific things that I, I need I might want to highlight in my video. Um, the next system that we did was the meta sounds um, fully system, I guess that's what we'll call it for now. But this system was the, the purpose of the system was to really apply variation With pitch, delay, and control, and and kind of control what sounds, control when sounds, when and how sounds would play in sound. Now, control when sounds would be triggered. How they would sound and how they would sound i think i think it's okay right i don't know we'll, we'll rather revive that one but yeah i mean that's the basic reason why i created the meta sound system also I, i'm really i've been really enjoying meta sounds of course but it, it allows me to be able to say okay this is the fully weapon sound that we want and i have i have a bunch of different input fully sounds for different layers Using. So, if we go over here, actually, and I, let's let's see. I did, it's going to look like a mess again. It's not perfect, but if I just look at the Axe Foley system, I have three basic inputs on here. I have the Axe Foley. Oh, that one's not even real. Let me, let me choose the ones that we actually are using. I don't think I'm using this one anymore. That's fine. But okay, so but the three main ones I have is like Axe Knife Foley, I call, or Axe Metal Foley. This is literally just sounds of just, it's like, um, I believe it was, a, it was a recording of like, oh yeah, I recorded um like 
I grab like a spatula and like a handheld grater and like a knife and kind of threw it in like a little like a little shirt and shaked it around um, <laughs> to make like the metal sounds for that. Um, the, that's the, the, the layer that I had for that there. I wanted something to sound, you know, to sound a little more natural as the person, you know, like kind of like the metal ting that you kind of need when a person is walking with a weapon, especially if it's an axe or, or a knife or um, a sword in particular, especially the bigger, bigger metal weapons. So that's what I kind of did there. Not perfect sound, but you know, that's a good start. And then the cloth armor, I kind of kept this one. Um, oh, here they are. Um, the cloth armor, um, this one is just a layer of the cloth armor movement I hope you guys can hear it it's as it's as loud as I can put in OBS actually let me just hear this real quick okay you know you guys can hear that well perfect okay yeah um so yeah, the cloth armor, so I did apply some random pitch to it a little bit, but actually the delay really doesn't need to be here. And the reason why I did that is because when I when I kind of determined what needed to be delayed in the, um, for the audio, for this inventory audio system, the cloth movement was probably gonna be the most um, on top of what the um, footsteps were doing, if that makes sense. And a matter of fact, I think for the fully in, with fully in general, with this with this item based system, you hear the cloth first, and then you might hear the weapons after. So I didn't. I actually zeroed out the delay for this, and this this is just a randomizer for which sound is playing for the cloth, um, cloth armor movement. So, yeah. And then um, the next one I had is like a wooden handle. This just kind of added like some kind of like organic organ an organic layer of, you know, the weapon handle. Um, because sometimes in my hit, I get some armor, some clothes, you know, whatever. And it is, there's actually a, a little like ting in there, of course. Um, I did record this myself. There's a, there's, there's some metal on the wood that I recorded, but um, I think it worked nicely for this. So yeah, this is the basic meta sound system I kind of created. Nothing really too flashy, but it, it allows me to kind of add variation not only between the layers of the foley but it also allows you to say okay i want to delay the axe knife sound a little bit more but then i want to keep the cloth with right on top of the footsteps or right on top of the and in this case actually right on top of the foley animation notify i want to hear that first before anything and then maybe the wooden handles and axe sounds might be a little delayed it's not a perfect system yet with that part um, it's still, you know, still tweaking some of the numbers, um, when it comes to the delay and the random time, but, but for, but for what it's worth, it's pretty a good start, um, with that. Now going to what I originally did. Now I believe with this, let's see if I can figure this out because for this part, it's been a while. Then I know, okay, so this is the original meta sounds that I created for the axe weapon. So I created this originally with, I bounced out the axe fully together. So all the layers that I had, they all play together. So as you can hear, you can hear the metal, you can hear the wood sounds, you can hear the cloth sounds. In the same bit but what i determined and then actually if i just play this version of this game you'll see, you'll see what i mean so first thing first the act sounds are not really triggering because again talk going back to the original to the system i was talking about um Previously, when it comes to triggering the fully animation notifies and the footstep animation notifies, I had them all together as one in this original rendition of this project. Um, 
what I needed to do is I needed to separate them, but I didn't have it separated at a time. So I was trying to use a line tracing to actually trigger both of them. As you can see, it triggered none of them because the line tracing is like way up there. It's I'm trying to catch the ax and the footsteps and it just didn't work. Um, secondly, when it whenever it did work, the way that it would play the sounds, it was like, you know, perfect. You know, perfect, no, no variation, no kind of, you know, randomness to the sounds. So it was, so I literally, you were hearing the footsteps and the Foley all together. And unless it's like a small item for a weapon, you probably, that's probably not going to happen. A big weapon, like a, like an ax or like a, a big spear, you're going to hear a little bit of delay on the Foley of that weapon before you hear your footsteps, if that makes sense. Again, if it was like a little small little dagger or a small little, you know, like lantern item, that'd be different. Um, compared to this demo, even like I said, this, you know, my final first rendition of this demo is not perfect either, but it's a little bit better than what I had. Because now that we have the footstep animation notifies and the fully animation notifies separated, now I'm able to walk around and trigger the footsteps. And then for the axe, I can. As you can see, they don't depend on each other. They're not really, they're not always tricking together at the same time. And actually even in the animation, no, oh, I'm, am I lagging on stream? I think I'm a little bit. I apologize, guys. <laughs> I, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at the OBS. I think, I think I was lagging a little bit. Let me just go ahead and close out DaVinci and stuff real, real quick. Don't ask me why I have all this stuff open. I just do. We'll do that. Okay, there you go. Just to try to save that a little bit, make that look a little bit better. A little, a little bit, a little bit better. Um, we'll do, we'll do the spear this time. Let's catch it up a little bit. That's a little bit buggy today, but anyways, um, yeah. So by separating the animation notifies to footsteps and fully, it allowed me to be able to say, okay. The Foley doesn't have to play with the footsteps and the footsteps don't have to play with the Foley. That it's better, it's just for the better that we separate those. And you can actually see on the animation track here, that's, that's exactly what I did. So the Foley steps are now, I did, a, I did on animation notify, the Foley steps and footsteps are together and they are triggering together. However, that's why I use the meta sounds to say, hey, I don't want you to play them together I want you to delay it by maybe like 0.2 seconds. I want you to delay it by 0.3 seconds. And then for the cloth armor, that's fine. You can just play with it. So, yeah. That's why we did a meta sounds there. So I guess to write that out. Um... So, fully sound was bounced as one track of sound using meta sounds. It allowed me to create variations. allowed me to utilize the different la the different Foley layers and trigger the layers at different times. 
times allowing the Foley movement to sound a bit more natural. Natural. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, so the not really a script, but it's a you know it's a good start. I'm trying to the the I think hmm. Oh yeah, I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so this is actually why I put a test list after inspiration. So this is like the logistical stuff that just needs to be said. I think that I wanna reduce like some of these things down to like maybe like a couple of sentences so that I'm not over explaining everything that I did. And also when I talk about the things that I changed, that will come more so more so more in detailed after the main part of the sections of this video. So yeah. Um yeah. All right, inspiration. So in a short summary I'm gonna say um This tone fenders podcast interview. Studio. Oops, I spelled it all wrong. I'm sorry. And um, I'm hoping I'm not messing this up. I will make that. I will definitely research this and make sure that that's accurate. But I believe everybody on the podcast was from Santa Monica Studios. I will double check that though, just to make sure. Um, yeah, so. And just for funsies and just to, not really for funsies, to make sure I'm giving credit where it's credit's due, uh, I'm gonna also just write down the names of the people. This is more so the, so when I start to pull out quotes that they may have said or, you know, reference something that they may have referenced that I liked, I could actually point out who said it on stream or on the podcast. So, uh, Shapler, Glenn Higa, Oops, Brian Higa, and Mr. Bo Jimenez, hope I'm saying that right, and Mr. Alex Pervetti. I was I had a pleasure of being able to meet both of those people at GDC this year. And they're very, very wonderful people to speak with regarding this. Yeah. Um mm, I think I wrote like a short miss here. Oh, was that? Maybe I wrote that somewhere else. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna pull it up here. I did. Okay. So, this is like my short little post that I that I made. Version. Okay. This is this is something I wrote. Um, Outside of outside of this here, but I think it might be something. That this is actually this is part of like the introduction post that I'm going to use when I'm you know advertising I guess my video on LinkedIn and stuff like that. It's like a, like a condensed version of what I'm writing about. Um, but this is what I wrote. I said um, this is kind of an inspiration you know kind of thing. I'll edit it. I'll edit it a little bit here. 
but um i was also, i was listening to the tone benders podcast and was inspired by the folks at cinematica studios as they discuss about the inventory fully system they used in god of war ragnarok this system allowed the team to lead with their audio by making the weapons armor and equipped weapons have their own fully sounds triggered these fully sounds could vary depending on what surface armor and space the player was interacting with um that's the version that's like a like a very condensed version this is more of a longer version i was inspired to create an audio um inventory system from the tone Be tone benders podcast interview with the wonderful folks from santa monica studio they spoke on the auto about the fully inventory system they used in god of war ragnarok this system allowed the teams allow the team to lead in audio by making hold on one second let's make sure i make that correction real quick allow the team to lead in audio by making the weapon armor and equipped items have their own fully sounds and depending on what surface armor and space they were uh, they were in the, the sound would adjust as so players were not players were not only able to um, interact and pick up the objects and hear a difference but it brought realism and immersion to the to the gameplay experience um i'll be real with you i like that last sentence <laughs> and i might just move it down here so that after i talk about you know fully the fully could could vary depending on what surface armor and space the player was interacting with the players were able to not only interact with the, interact uh not only able uh players were able to were players were able to not i, I don't i don't know i always like i like doing that sentence players were not only able players were able players were not only able to interact interact and pick up objects and hear the difference and recognize the difference how about that but it brought realism and immersion to the gameplay experience we'll keep that for now it needs to be edited down of course but like that's a good i think that's a good like okay this is the inspiration this is like the basic idea why i liked what they did yeah okay yeah okay so we have a good, we have a good little chunk here i know i know this is kind of like a writing stream at the same time but again like this is this is exactly this is what i wanted to do today i just really wanted to talk out loud what 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 i what i've done with this audio system since gosh when did i start it i guess uh back in july was it july i don't even remember i don't remember when i first started this project actually actually I, honestly i think it was i remember i i remember, actually remember that i first conceived of the idea in march during gdc and then I did my friend, I, did, I was like doing my first rendition for a couple of months. But then it was, yeah, okay, there, there you go. In June is when I decided to scrap the first project. And actually, I don't even think that was the first project. That was like the second one, technically. And then, and then I finally, you know, made this project, which is like kind of a, a successor. Unfortunately, I know that I'm probably going to probably um, throw this one out and then, you know, make a better one. Are you guys hear double audio? I hope not. I think you guys are. I'm gonna mute that. Oh, I see why. I was gonna so first, but not for now there. Okay, so yeah, so I guess to recap, this is like this is kind of the whole intro that I want here. Which is good. Yay. We have the intro. The intro is just gonna be open air, it's gonna be hello, my name is Hello, my name is Darius Gordine. Part is going to say hello. My name is Darius, and this is my audio. Uh, this is my inventory audio system. There's going to be some gameplay. I'm going to just put start short clip of the game.
gameplay, which I um, recorded this morning. And it's just like a, I already closed out the, I already closed out DaVinci, so. Separate video. I'll probably re-record it a little bit. Make it less chunky. And the biggest change I actually need to do, right, honestly, is right now, unfortunately, the spear and axe sound similar. Um, I wasn't really concerned about that. But now that I'm sharing that, I do want to make sure that I try to modify that. Just actually, I probably will still post it, just because, like I said, if you look, again, if you look at this task list, this, these are a lot of tasks to do. So we'll get to the sound part of it, especially when I know that I I want to change the. Oh, I guess maybe that's something I should put in next. Well, we won't, we won't do that. We won't do that yet because that's not going to, I'm not going to say that. But what I want to do here next is maybe just put out, um, I'm going to make it like a little header. Things to improve, change. Yeah, so things to improve it to improve and change. Things that are proven and change are going to probably definitely be. I'm just gonna write. I'm just gonna write. Type this out. I'm not gonna type nothing long. I'm just gonna. So. What did I say needed to be improved? Um, first thing first, equipped, equipped weapon system, slash item, system. objects, Another improvement that I that I want here is gonna be Oh yeah, the fully the meta sounds actually. With the meta sounds I wanna be able to make it so I can with the multiple Equipped weapons means together and need to be fixed. So kind of create like an automated system. Say, okay, well, these weapons are playing it all together at the same time. It's gonna come through this input and then it's going to go through like compressors or whatever, and then go out in the serial mix again. 
with all the different fully weapons mix. And then also improvement. Downs here. Spear, axe, and new weapon. Hammer. Want to know what the final thing is? The final thing is going to be being able to equipped, equipped weapons one socket items because right now we're using the same back socket which and actually I can show you I tried to actually equip an item but as you can see the lens is floating because of course being able to equip the lantern properly without it looking like it's floating or anything. Of course, you can see it a little bit. So th that's kind of the next. All right, I think we did a pretty good job. We did it's been about an hour and a half doing it here. I think it's. I think I'm gonna take a breather, and then we'll just chill out and stream. Or, and then yeah, that, that'll be it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and do a beat. Yeah, I, I have music on. I haven't made. I have not made a beat abuse. I promise you, I'll get to it one day. One day I'll be able to make a beer. Till now. Hold on tight, I'll be right back and continue with this. <laughs> 